back again. So here is the Stripology Ruler by GE Designs. And what you have is every half inch you have a slit that the rotary cutter can run down. Now, you still have to square up the fabric and the ruler. And it goes from 0 to 12 and a half inches. So if you're making 2 inch cuts, you can make 6 of these without moving this ruler, as opposed to the way we were doing it before with 2 inches and then 2 inches and then 2 inches. So this is called stripology squared because with these other lines you can square a block and that really is important. Um, so I have that one, just wanted to show that one to you. One more thing before we start our sewing. I want to illustrate or show you what a strip set is. These three fabrics have been sewn together, width of fabric, salvage here, salvage there. Um, and so now that we've sewn them together, we are going to cut them into segments three and a half inches long. And it's a lot easier than dealing with three little pieces sewing them together. So, so we simply cut, 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 cut. And that is called a strip set and it makes it easier and those were the blocks that were used to make this quilt. So that's how it was done with the technique of using strip sets. Okay, let's get back to our project. We are going to illustrate chain piecing. This will be the shortest chain possible, two pieces. Um, Right sides together on the fabrics, we're sewing the green one to the beige one. I am going to put a pin where the edge I'm going to sew, and I am going to sew the red one to the beige one. Again, I am going to put a pin here. A lot seems to happen between the design board, the iron board, and the sewing machine. <coughs> Okay, as I have in the past, I'm going to start with a scrap of fabric and then the first piece of the chain. So what this simply means is that you sew one piece after the other piece. You don't clip the threads. You don't take it out of the machine. It should save time and thread. So this is called chaining or chain piecing. If you were making 10 of these blocks, you might add the green piece to the beige piece 10 times. That would be chaining and chain piecing. See how that wants to slide over at the end? I have to kind of watch for that. Okay, so let's press these. Remember, we're going to press press them 
and then press them to one side. I'm going to press them toward the green one. In this case, it doesn't make any difference which side. It seems to want to go that way, so we're going to leave it go that way. I'm going to press it, and then we're going to press it to one side. Now you've had very clear instructions as to which direction to press these. So be sure you follow those instructions. And we can bring them back over to their place in our project. And so this are, these are pressed to the right. These are pressed to the left. So now we want to sew these two together. And this is where we're going to be nesting the seams. If you can see that with one seam pressed to one side, you feel it. You have a very flat feel. If you overlap these, you can feel the thickness. You can feel a gap if there is a gap. So, probably to begin with, it's a good idea to pin these, a pin on each side of that seam. And remember, it's not just at the edge that you want them to match. You're going to be sewing a quarter of an inch down, so you want to be sure that they're matching a quarter of an inch down. Now, those pins take up a little space here, so Let's sew this together. Here's my scrap of fabric. I'm going to give that one just a little bit of a tug there. Now, when I come up close to this, I'm going to take the pin out because I don't think my machine sews over them. And I'll go without pins. I don't suggest you do that down here. We'll see how well I do. Do our pressing. Oh, we should look and see how well we did. Okay, that's what we'd like to see. We'd like to see those nice matched corners. And the way you do that is to nest, and I would suggest at this point you pin at least until you get better at doing this. Okay, now we would be adding this bottom strip. Um, what did I do? Well, that's easy to fix. We would be adding this bottom strip in the same way and then we would have the basis of our project. We do need to square the blocks. And so what that means is that these blocks should all be 12 and a half uh, inches square. 
With this 12 and a half inch ruler, I can take the diagonal, the 45 degree diagonal, put it in one corner, move it to the other corner, And it looks pretty good. It looks like I have a little bit of extra green right here and maybe a little bit of extra yellow uh, down here. So without this ruler, we can see, I can see that that's uh, over. So we can take our long ruler and we can measure 12 and a half inches here. And we're just taking off threads and we don't want to take off an eighth of an inch. We just want to square it up a little bit. But again, if you have 10 of these, they all need to be the same size. If you are, um, if you have a smaller one, then you need to make them all smaller. Um, so we square up our blocks and now we're ready to sew the sashing to both sides. We're going to sew this side to the rail fence, this side to the nine patch, and we'll have the center of our table runner. Uh, next time we're going to add a border and we're going to make the quilt sandwich. That's all for now. Thank you.